college campuses all across America, including right here in Storage, Connecticut. There is excitement in the air. The college basketball season officially gets underway tonight. UConn plays host to Colgate. All the action coming your way right here on SNY. Hi again, everybody. Gary up alongside Tim Welsh. Excitement here at Gampo Pavilion, but it's tempered a little bit, Tim, because the leading scorer from a year ago for Connecticut, Jalen Adams, is not in the lineup. He has been suspended for the game. He's listed as day-to-day -day because of an incident that happened earlier this week off the court. So how does UConn avoid a distraction tonight? Well, they can't be distracted. They can't feel sorry for themselves at all because Jalen Adams, we know how important he is to UConn. Everyone does. We saw last season and in the preseason now, but Altree Gilbert, Terry Larry, and company have to step up their game because of the fact that Adams handles the ball. He does so much for them, and they also have so many young players that they have to play as a more of a unit, and they can't rely on one guy like they do with Adams. Well, tonight does mark the return of both Terry Larry and Altree Gilbert. Both missed the majority of last season with early season injuries that required surgery. So they're back tonight. You've got to figure there are some nerves, a little bit of uh, butterflies in the stomach? How do they come out of the shoot quickly? Well, not only that, I think rust is important, too, because the fact that they, they both missed a majority of last season, as you said, but Altry Gilbert is a promising young player, a guy that really was impressive last year until he hurt the shoulder out in Los Angeles. He's rehab. He looks good in the preseason. He's going to have to play the point tonight. He's going to have to play the two. He's going to have to make shots. We get a look at Terry Larrier right there. He's coming off the ACL injury. He's a potential NBA player down the road. Well, he is, but he's missed the, most of the last two seasons. Two years ago, sitting now with transfer rules from VCU, and then last year with the injury. So we saw the talent that Larrier possesses. He's going to be an important player in the high post, a guy that can make plays kind of as a point forward type position. A lot of new faces on this Connecticut team. They've got eight new players, four via the freshman route, two grad transfers, and two JUCO transfers. Pick a couple out of there, Tim, to keep an eye on tonight. I like a lot of the young players, meaning the freshmen, but the, the most important guys probably early will be Antoine Anderson, the grad senior transfer from Fordham who's played in a lot of big games. He's more of a man. He's more mature. He can get out and guard people all over the floor and play the point guard position. And Eric Cobb, I mean, you see that 6'9", 280. You can't make that up. I mean, he is a big physical presence down low. And also Polly, a guy who's very, very skilled in the high post, a guy who makes things happen out on the perimeter, can make things happen on the baseline as well. It's opening night in college basketball. Connecticut looking to bounce back from a subpar season. A year ago, they play host to Colgate. We've got the starting lineups and the opening tip when we come back from Gamble Pavilion in a moment. Why is brought to you by People's United Bank. Choosing the right bank shouldn't be a jump ball. People's United Bank member FDIC. By Toyota. Tested, trusted, Toyota. Toyota, let's go places. By Connecticut Lottery. You can't win if you don't play. And by the Connecticut State Farm agents of the game. Anthony Raggy in stores and Matthew Buff in Bristol speak with them today. As we get a check right now of the starting lineup, they are presented by Trantolo and Trantolo. Colgate features the reigning rookie of the year in the Patriot League, Will Raymond, the young man from New York City for Connecticut, Antoine Anderson and Tyler Polly both getting a start for the head coach, Kevin Ollie. Let's welcome in third member of our broadcast crew. That's Taylor Rump. She's got more on Jalen Adams, who is not in the lineup tonight for Connecticut. That's right, Gary. You know, I spoke to Christian Vitale and Terry Larrier about Jalen's absence, and they both had the same message, and that was simply that they both have to step it up, specifically Christian Vitale, who said, you know, me and Jalen are the only two players who played an entire season. So I'm glad to miss his leadership on the court. I'm glad to miss his experience, the way that he's able to control the game. But Jalen Adams is here in the arena watching the game, so it will be very interesting to see how he leads from the bench. All right, Taylor, we thank you as we get a look right there at Jalen Adams, who a season ago averaged just over 14 points a game, so they will miss his point production. Getting ready to jump center, Dana Bath, the junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and, well, the new center for Connecticut, number 23, Eric Cobb, and he controls the tip, and here we go. The college hoop season is underway. It's Antoine Anderson, number zero, the grad transfer from Fordham with the basketball. We expect Colgate will play some zone, but they do come out man-to-man. -man. There's Terry Larrier from 18 feet off the back iron. It's Swapshire going up to get it 
for Colgate. Well, Colgate's going to play a really controlled man-to-man -man defense and try to make UConn beat them from the outside. It'll be man, but it's almost with a lot of zone principles. This is Francisco Amiel, Swapshire. Sean O'Brien trying to get to the rack. Nice dump inside, and that's Dina Bat. Lays it in the first bucket of the game, and Colgate is on the board first. Well, that's a bad sign early for UConn, not containing Sean O'Brien, the veteran point guard. He just got into the gaps created, and UConn did not rotate. That's the big guy, Cobb. Thought about it for a moment. Six foot nine, 280 pounds. He's a big man. He's a junior out of Jacksonville, Florida. Putting it on the deck. Loses it, and here comes O'Brien. Connecticut looking to run on the wing. Raymond off the glass and Colgate out quickly 4-0. Well, this is a Colgate team that was 10-22 and 22 a year ago, but they returned all most of their veteran players, including R Will Raymond. And, but Sean O'Brien, a big, big key, a quality point guard who knows how to play the game, is not going to make a lot of mistakes. Antoine Anderson from downtown, nothing but nylon. So the first bucket of the season is a three from Antoine Anderson. O'Brien gave him a lot of space, and Anderson looked very comfortable from the perimeter. Sean O'Brien with the basketball, third team All-Patriot preseason. The senior from Lafayette Hill, Pennsylvania. He'll pull up from beyond the arc. Al Tariq Gilbert injured third game of the season a year ago from way downtown. Terry Larrier runs it down off the window and so soft it in. And Connecticut has their first lead. Well, Larry, you just see his silky smooth moves on the baseline. That great effort on the glass, so important. Finishing at the rim. Swapshire giving it up for Amiel. Swapshire from deep. Tipped out of there by Raymond. And that's a travel going to go back over to Connecticut. There's Kevin Alley, sixth year on the job at UConn. And on the opposing sideline, Matt Langle, seventh year, played at University of Pennsylvania, was an assistant coach at Penn and Temple. And then got the head coaching job at Colgate seven years ago. Mamadou Diara is into the game, number 21 for Connecticut. He sat out all of last season. He was a red shirt with a chronic knee issue, but a top 100 recruit coming out of high school. Larrier, not bashful, and Terry Larrier knocks down another. Well, Terry Larrier is the guy Kevin Alley thinks that can either zone bust or I think it's very comfortable from the perimeter. He's going to have to make a lot of plays from the baseline, the high post, and from the three-point line. Early season. They need Larrier, as you mentioned in our open, to step up and be a team leader. He's played just three and a half games over the past two years because of the transfer from VCU and then the injury. Swapshire from way downtown and Jordan Swapshire rattles it in there. Colgate very patient early and UConn having a little bit of problems on the perimeter with their rotations. They want to get up and pressure Colgate into being disruptive, but so far Colgate looks poised. Gilbert trying to get to the bucket, not even close. Going to stay with the Huskies. It went off on the L. Christian Vital checking into the game for the first time as Al Tariq Gilbert sits down. Vital started 10 games a season ago for Kevin Ali's team. A 52 threes a season ago, most on the team behind Rodney Purvis, who graduated. There's Vital beating the shot clock. Swapshire. It rims out. Bat, the offensive rebound. It's knocked away. Quick hands. Anderson getting it ahead to Polly. It glides in. And there's the first bucket of Polly's first of his collegiate career. Well, that was a bad play by Bat. He got the offensive rebound and tried to pitch it back up. He should have went right to the rim. And UConn got out and ran over the top. Vital to the trailing. Terry Larrier knocks down another three. 
Eight early points now for Terry Larrier, and Connecticut opens a six-point lead. Now Larrier looks really comfortable from the outside and showing no signs of rust from missing most of last season. He was injured fourth game of the year out at the Maui Invitational, suffered a torn ACL and a meniscus tear as well. And there is an offensive foul on Dana Bat, the illegal screen. Ball goes back over to Connecticut. The Huskies turning up the defensive pressure and getting out and running. Uh, this is going to be their mantra this year. Get out, pressure, and go to the rim and finish. 13-7 lead thanks in large part to Terry Larrier. Gary, there's nothing better than sitting all of a season with an injury and coming out of the gates and just feeling like your old self. You wonder if it's still there or you've got it and you can find it. And Terry Larry looks smooth as silk right out of the locker room. Well, Kevin Ali telling us earlier today that he needs Larrier to be such a multi-dimensional player for him. You know, the game has become in many ways positionless, and the more versatility you can give a head coach, the more valuable you become. Well, with all their inex inexperience up front and all the newcomers and question marks, Larrier is a guy that you know what you're going to get from him every night. And I think he's going to give you even more this year, Connecticut-wise than they thought because he looks really confident as a guy who can handle the ball, make plays, and also go inside and be a presence. Christian Patel spotting Diara. Beautiful body control, but can't get it to go down. Kept the five inside by Isaiah Welly, the freshman, who's just checked into the game. And there is Patel, too hard off the back iron. And Swapshire comes down with it for Colgate. Swapshire not bashful. Diara giving it up to Vitale, back to Diara. And it's knocked away by O'Brien, stays with Connecticut. And Diara gets hammered on his way to the bucket. He's going to shoot two. Mamadou Diara plays a lot of physical presence inside. He's still very raw and he's, he's anxious. He didn't, he and not as well missed all of last year with an injury, so he's He's excited, he's playing a little bit too fast out there in the exhibition games, he got into foul trouble, and you can see he's, his feet and his body are moving faster than it probably should, but Kevin Ali really likes his ability to be physical, play hard on the inside, and he'll get a feel of how the speed of the game is, is he's supposed to operate in the paint as he gets more experience. 6'8", redshirt freshman from Queens, began his high school career at Thomas Edison High School, and then transferred to Putnam Science Academy before matriculating here at Connecticut. Anderson takes a seat for UConn. Altari Gilbert is back in for Kevin Ollie's team. So the first two points of Mamadou Diara's collegiate career, and that one is thrown away off the hands of Dana Back going back over to Connecticut. Well, that's what Connecticut wants to do a little bit more this season, extend the pressure, 2-2-1, two, two, back to pressing man, maybe some switching, but an overplay on the basketball, not get in the pain and worry about rotations, but use their physical ability and their quickness on the perimeter to disrupt people. Well, UConn needs to replace quite a bit of offensive firepower from a year ago, 63% of their offense either transferred or graduated, and 77% of their rebounds aren't here anymore. So, a lot for this group to make up. Excuse me, Gary. Kevin, not happy with that shot selection by Vitale on that last possession. And so far tonight, though, UConn has done a nice job of spacing the floor and being patient in the half court. This is Jordan Burns, the freshman from San Antonio, Texas, in the game for full game. Was pulled out of there as Terry Larrier skies to get it. Vitale looking to run. And that's going to be called on the floor before Alan the shot Lears was put up. Koga right now is playing a little bit into the hands of what First UConn wants them to do. They're just standing around and looking at that pressure defense. They're not getting much movement. They're not getting that back side of the defense moving at all to make to see if they will react. You know, that's what you have to do, Gary, with young players, especially at the forward position. See how they move when the ball changes sides of the floor and see if they properly rotate into position. But right now, Colgate standing around taking a lot of quick shots. More new faces for Connecticut. That's Josh Carlton, the 6'9 freshman from Winterville. 
North Carolina. He's checked in for the first time. Quinton Williams also in number 11. Anchorage, Alaska native and comes from junior college in Arizona. Antoine Anderson, the high arcing jumper. Anderson, very pretty. He's got six points. And Connecticut is on a 10-0 run to extend this lead to 18 to seven. Well, Anderson only shot a 34%. From the three at Fordham a year ago, but he looks very comfortable from the outside. Shot clock at eight. And it's stolen away out of the hands of Jordan Swapshire, and it's going back over to Connecticut. There's Quentin Williams, number 11. 23 years old, he's never played above the junior college level. Well, one of the reasons we talked about Ken uh, Colgate not reversing the ball and getting any movement is because Connecticut's not allowing them to on that possession. They really got up and did a great job of pressuring the ball, denying that reversal pass, and they were in the passing lanes with active hands. We saw Kevin Ollie up and clapping. He loves that defense as Connecticut has caused five Colgate turnovers here in the first half. So that is Josh Carlton, number 25, as we've spoken quite a bit about. You know, it's a new look Connecticut team. Rodney Purvis graduated, Amita Bryma, Kenton Facey, all key members of this Connecticut team. And they had three big transfers as Carlton goes in with a two-hand stuff. Well, Gary, you and I talked about earlier today at the shoot-around, and I really like Polly, I like Whaley, and I like Carlton as three young freshman forwards for UConn. They are keepers. Carlton going up, and he tracks down the loose ball. Here comes Connecticut again. They run. Anderson, hesitation, trying to get to the baseline. Josh Carlton had 20 points in the Huskies final exhibition tune-up against Queens College. He is a classic back to the basket center. The shot clock down to five. Larrier. Coming up on 11 minutes to go here in the first half. Connecticut leads Colgate 20 to seven. There's Raymond, nothing but nylon. Will Raymond, the sophomore. That's one of the few times Colgate got the ball from one side of the floor to the other, and they have to get Will Raymond involved. He is very, very dangerous as a stretch forward who can make a lot of plays from the outside. Connecticut has to do a better job closing out. Anderson can't connect for Connecticut. Raymond the rebound. He led all Patriot League rookies in scoring a season ago. Just under 15 a game, and there's Raymond again, right on cue, and that is a pretty hierarchy jump shot. Well, Terry Larry's got to do a better job. I mean, he's got length and quickness that, will, that can disrupt Will Raymond. He's given him way too much space on the outside, and Kevin Ollie wants to talk about it. Well, Will Raymond now with eight points to lead Connecticut. He's two of two from beyond the arc. As the Huskies have the early lead, Colgate trying to get back in this game. A year ago, Connecticut was a game under 500. They want to begin on a quick note tonight. Opening night, college basketball, UConn leading Colgate 20 to 13. Let's go over to Taylor Rooks. A report tonight is brought to you by Bob's Discount Furniture. Taylor. Gary, you guys touched on this a bit about Terry Lair. He's kind of putting on a show tonight, already has eight points, but he said, you know what? I don't think my confidence is going to be fully back until I get that first shot. Well, he got his first shot. He said the thing that was hard to get over was the mental aspect. Am I not as explosive as I once was? Can I get up and down like I did? But he said tonight is going to be key to getting back to that form that he was beginning to see last season. One of the things about Terry Larry are question marks. Could he shoot the three consistently? Didn't make one of the preseason. The exhibition season was 0 for 8 from downtown. And then he comes out and knocks down his first couple, too. Well, when you watch him in practice and in warm-ups, you see the stroke is there. And you talk to the coaching staff, and they say, we're, we're not worried about those stats in the preseason. We think he's going to get back in, into a rhythm. They were more worried about just his ability to make plays in the lane, be confident with that leg. But they're be confident with that leg. But so far, he's just playing in a great form. Low. He doesn't look rusty at all and playing with a lot of confidence. And it's so important, as you see, without Alex. Beautiful floater from Terry Larrier. He 
He's in double figures now. He's got 10 points for Connecticut. And just checking into the game, Hugh Baxter, number 22 for the Raiders. Baxter, the 6'8 freshman from down under, Melbourne, Australia, right to the bucket. Had a step with Jordan Burns, but it's knocked away. Well, you see the, the fluidity, the ability to get his defender off balance, move one way and then spin back the other. Another important factor in his recovery, just the ability to go both ways with a lot of confidence. Off the inbounds, there's a three from Jordan Burns. Jordan Burns three. Matt Lengel told us that Burns, who had a terrific final year at South Kent, probably would have been a more highly recruited player if they hadn't locked him up early. He sort of uh, found his way late in his senior year. Those kids from San Antonio can play, there's no doubt about it. And UConn went through that out of bounds play earlier and you see Vital drive into the hole and that's what he has to do. He has to mix up his game. Sometimes he gets a little bit too three point happy and just hangs out on the perimeter, but he has that ability and that toughness to drive to the rack and get to the free throw line. Christian Vital shot 71% from the free throw line. It is freshman season. One of the things Kevin Ali has liked about this young man is his toughness. I mean, you, you talk about you know, point guards and then two guards, but he's, he's a true combo guard. Well, with all the injuries they had a year ago, he was thrown into the mix, and they probably didn't think he was going to get much playing time, but uh, in the American Conference games, I mean, he was an important piece for them, and he grew up very, very quickly. I was impressed with just his overall intelligence on the floor, and sometimes he plays a little bit too fast and is a little, little bit too happy from the three-point line. Gets a little bit too quick from the three, but he's a good defender, and that toughness is needed for UConn. Jordan Burns throws it away, goes back over to Connecticut. Well, that was a great job by Vital on, on that possession. Once O'Brien gave the ball up, Vital just shot at him all over the floor and just denied him, and they, they could never get into their offense without Sean O'Brien kickstarting from the top. That is the sixth turnover of the first half for Colgate. And that's going to be called an illegal screen on Josh Carlton. A lot of guys coming in and out off that Connecticut bench. We're seeing a lot of new faces. Well, I don't think Kevin really knows what his rotation is yet, so he's giving everybody a little taste early. He uh, doesn't want anybody to get winded. And plus, when you're going to play this pressure-type defense, you've got to keep guys fresh out on the court and try to wear your opponent down. This is Sean O'Brien. Hugh Baxter from the corner. Hugh Baxter too hard off the back iron. Francisco Amiel picks it up. A new fresh shot clock for Colgate. Colgate 10 and 22 a season ago. Strong move to the bucket, and it's a chance at a three-point play for Jordan Burns. Matt Lang will talk to you and I about Burns at length and his ability just to kind of make plays off the bounce. And he's really going to shine this year in the Patriot League playing alongside Sean O'Brien. And you see his confidence as a scorer just taking the ball, finding that angle to get to the rim. That's the first foul on Eric Cobb and just the second here on Connecticut in the first half as Burns finishes off the old-fashioned three-point play. And Colgate, the Raiders, they cut this lead back to four is Al Tariq Gilbert and Christian Vettel head with the basketball in the backcourt for UConn. It's Polly Cobb and Antoine Anderson on the floor as well. Well, Colgate settled in defensively in the last four or five minutes and they seem to be rotating better and putting a little bit more pressure on the basketball. Nice up fake right there. A beautiful floater from Al Tariq Gilbert. Well, that's what Gilbert has to do. He has to try to make things happen off the bounce. And you'll see his confidence grow as this game moves on coming off the injury. Altery Gilbert, the 12th McDonald's All-American to play at Connecticut. The American Conference Preseason Rookie of the Year for the second consecutive year. 
He was eligible again following the injury as Burns can't get this one to go. Connecticut would love to push the tempo. Here comes Gilbert. And that's going to go back over to Colgate. So the Red Raiders, they've hung tough here early on. They trail it by six. Stay on top of all things UConn with up-to-the-minute Huskies news, game recaps, press conferences, and exclusive interviews on SNYUConn.com, part of the SNY.TV blog network. Not only changes when it comes to so many new faces for this Connecticut team on the floor, but Rafael Chilius joining Kevin Ali's staff from the West Coast. Tim. Well, Rafael Chilius has been around the block in this business, and everywhere he's gone, he's, uh, he's proven one thing, that he can recruit, and there's no doubt about that. He was very successful at Washington, spent some time at Villanova as well, and highly regarded prep school coach in the state of Connecticut. So listen, he's a guy that's going to go out and find the players not only in this region but nationally and uh, obviously that's an important piece and so far so good for you kind of have a good recruiting class coming in for next year there's a steal by tyler polly trying to take it right to the bucket powers through can't get it to go but he's fouled by number 30 francisco amiel and he's going to shoot two we see the revolving door of players. We talked about it, and these guys are fresh. And Polly, his length, his quickness, and great anticipation coming from that, you know, that free safety position in the back of the defense. And slight, but he is stronger than he looks. And he can make plays around the basket offensively. You see that great anticipation in the middle of the press. Well, Tyler Polly comes from a very athletic family. His father played six seasons in the NFL as a linebacker. And most notably was in Super Bowl 36 with the Rams, that 20 to 17 loss to the New England Patriots. He was the starting right linebacker in that game. So he comes from a very strong athletic family and background. And let's be honest, Kevin Ollie was effusive in his praise for Tyler Putley this morning. Well, he's in the starting lineup from the get-go, and uh, you can see he has a great feel for the game. And I, I watch him on defense in the exhibition game against Queens, and he's very good rotating. You can see he sees both. He's got his head on a, on a swivel, and he uses those long arms very, very well to get out in the passing lanes. This is Burns with the shot clock at three. Has to hoist it up there and gets it to go. He tickles the twine. Does Jordan Burns. You can did a good job defensively, but Gilbert on the recovery just gave Burns way too much space on the perimeter. He's got to close out tighter and get a hand in his face. Nine points for Jordan Burns. He's two of four from beyond the arc. Antoine Anderson into the game, as is Eric Cobb, the big man facing up. Gilbert knifing to the bucket, but he cannot finish at the rim. Colgate a chance to get back within two with a three, and there's Burns off the front iron, and Cobb comes down with it. Yeah, it's a little quick for Burns, even though he's feeling it confidence-wise. He's got a, deep, a little bit more patience against his UConn defense. On the L, the block. Gilbert, nothing but air, and that's one of the biggest issues about Connecticut. Can they shoot the three consistently? Ferguson into the game for Colgate. He can't get it to go in the pace as quick as. It's quickened, and it's not much intelligence on both sides of the floor. He's got to use the basket, use the floor, use the teammates. Right now, it's just whoever touches it over half court is jacking up threes. Cobb, good footwork. Stays with it. Baby hook. Can't get that one to go. Swapshire. The rebound to Ferguson. Fort Wayne, Indiana. Sorry, Gary. Cobb's posted up, but he's posted up about five feet outside of the paint. He needs to get deeper in the lane. Francisco on the L can't get it to go. The shooting percentage is coming down a little bit. Beautiful. Euro step to the bucket right there by Al Terry Gilbert. He's got four points. His second strong drive to the hoop that he's converted. Okay, with a little gas on that last possession, Gilbert just knifed through the entire defense. Nice feed inside to Bat. It's knocked away by Antoine Anderson, and so Bat is going to shoot two. Well, Eric Cobb is 280 pounds, but look where he's posting up. He's two or three feet off outside of the block. So when he makes his move to the post, instead of being right at the rim, he's got to shoot this shot over a contested, over a defender's contested hand, and that's the problem. If you're going to post up, 
He's got to get better post position. They shouldn't even throw him the ball that far away from the basket. Wholesale change, changes on both sides. Terry and Larry are back in for Connecticut. So Eric Cobb began as he sits down. He began his college career at South Carolina, played for Frank Martin, then junior college, and then here to Connecticut. And they seem to think that if he can get his head on straight, he can be a major factor for them. Look, early look is that he's getting in a little bit better shape to play at this pace because uh, UConn is going to get out and press. They're going to play a fast pace, pace game. And he looks a little bit gassed, and that's why he's not posting up in the proper position. Altori Gilbert, soft, rattles out. O'Brien comes out of there for Colgate. The Raiders hanging around in this game. They trail it by just six as we come up on four minutes to go in the first half. Opening night at Gampo Pavilion, Jordan Swapshire. Hit as he tried to get to the bucket. And the foul on Mamadou Diara. Whenever Colgate has changed sides of the floor with the basketball, they've been, they've had more success because UConn, we've talked about it, with all of their youth and inexperience on the front line, sometimes they will have trouble with the rotations. And here, another open man on the inbounds. Ferguson halfway down, can't get it to go. Raymond working on the offensive glass, the bucket and the foul. Got a chance at a three-point play. Colgate hanging around with some patience on the offensive end and a little bit of toughness on the backboards. And kind of looking to regroup, but they've got to play with a little bit more physicality in the lane. Coming up, get all your first half highlights and analysis. Michelle, you and Vin Parisi. Let's go to see Vin and hear some tips from him on his fall fashion wardrobe. It's the UConn Men's Basketball Halftime Show presented by our local Ford dealers. That's coming up in just a little bit. Quite the dapper uh, duo. I, I yes. saw a little tweet from uh, the studios down at the World Trade Center earlier and uh, very impressed. Will Raymond has been just rock solid for Matt Lengel so far. He's told us he can score in a variety of ways. And we've seen it. He's knocked down a couple of threes and we've seen him battle inside that three-point play working off the glass for Colgate. Well, Colgate kind of survived the early wave of UConn confidence and pressure, and now they're kind of settling in. Now they're going into a 2-3 zone to really challenge UConn from the perimeter. Well, Matt Langle told us to pull an upset early in the season. You've got to have discipline, take care of the basketball, and you've got to avoid getting crushed on the glass. Now, Connecticut is considerably bigger than Colgate, but they have just a 15 to 14 advantage on the glass so far. Well, I think Matt Lang is gonna give this zone a, a three minute and 33 second look going into the half. And if I were him, I would pack it in and dare UConn to shoot from the outside. Now, Antoine Anderson looks comfortable so far, and they're gonna have to keep the ball out of the middle of the of of with Terry Larrier, but Connecticut's got to go through Larrier. He's kind of been quiet the last five, six minutes. They have to make sure he gets his touches on the offensive end. One of the big questions about Connecticut is can they shoot threes on a consistent basis? Teams will pack it in, force them to shoot threes. They've made four of ten so far in tonight's game. Swapshire giving it up for O'Brien. Raymond steps on the sideline, so the ball goes back to Connecticut. That sort of thing that makes that guy right there, the head coach, very happy because he loves quality defense. Well, Terry Lara did a better job of getting out and pressuring Raymond on that possession. That's what he has to do, use that length and quickness on the perimeter. UConn just won for their last eight from the field. As Tyler Pauly giving it up for Anderson. This is Christian Patel, Larrier at the foul line. There's that 15-foot jump shot by Terry Larrier, and he remains red hot. He's got a dozen points for Connecticut on five of seven shooting. I really like that scheme by Connecticut. You don't have to beat that zone from the outside. You've got to go inside out and go look to the middle to Larrier. Coach Ollie and everybody from the UConn bench, every single time they have a possession, is saying, talk on defense. That's one thing Ollie wants his players to do to become better defensive players, is talk on the court. Make sure they know who has who, and so that makes you a better defensive player. And they're all preaching that over here, guys. Great PFE to inside, and Isaiah Welly 
going to shoot two. The young man, who Terry, who uh, who Coach Ollie spoke about uh, so glowingly this morning. Well, that was a good look by Anderson on the inside, but even a better catch by Whaley on the move for a big guy to have those type of hands. And he has that, you see the length and but the ability also just to move without the basketball and a nice smooth shot from the free throw line. Whaley knocks down both free throws. His first college points. Swapshire, strong to the bucket. Jordan Swapshire cuts the lead back to four as he's got five points now from Matt Lengel's team. Well, nice job by Swapshire flashing into the middle of the, of the offense to attack that zone, and Connecticut's got to do a better job of closing up the traps. Well, that name Swapshire, if it sounds familiar, his brother Jared played at both Louisville and Northwestern, and there's a turnover, and O'Brien comes out of there with it. Burns the quick extra pass for Raymond, the high arcing jump shot, and Raymond is perfect in the game. He's five for five from the field. He's got 14 points. It was caused by very good defense by Colgate getting out in the passing lanes in this 2-3 zone. Very active with their hands. UConn has to do a better job of reversing the ball and ball faking. Tyler Polly not even close off the back iron, and Colgate a chance to take the lead with a three. Swapshire thought about it. Burns gets bumped from behind by Christian Vettel. Well, Will Raymond was the rookie of the year in the Patriot League, and here's why. He can step out and find his way from the three-point line, and he looks to be very comfortable. And the thing about Will Raymond you like is he moves around out on the floor. He kind of just disappears, and then all of a sudden he appears, and Colgate does a nice job of reversing the ball, reversing the floor, and finding it. Raymond made 65 threes a season ago. He's three for three from downtown so far tonight. So Jordan Burns goes to the free throw line. One and one, a chance to tie this game. But he misses the first. UConn shooting 39% so far in this first half. It's Anderson, Polly, Cobb. Larrier and Vital on the floor for Kevin Ollie. Anderson, the floater. Okay, doing a very good job, Gary, in this zone as whoever catches the ball is seeing basically three. Colgate defenders in their vision. There's Raymond again. That's his first miss of the night. Had a chance to give Colgate the lead. So final 30 seconds here of the first half. Gampo Pavilion, Connecticut will slow it down and play for the last shot. They have to go through Larrier, but Colgate's doing a nice job, even when he catches the ball, surrounding him with that extra defender. Anderson, the jump stop, but he travels. He slid the pivot foot, and so it's going to go back to Colgate. And a timeout for Matt Lingle's team. So, you know, it's interesting because Colgate got down early and then they sort of battled back. And a lot of that from beyond the arc. Raymond has led them, but their six threes in this first half have been a key to their comeback. Well, UConn came out of the gates with good pressure on the perimeter, not allowing Colgate to reverse the ball or when they did get out on the perimeter, get in their face and contest the threes. But Colgate got comfortable on the offensive end of the floor, pushing the ball up the sideline, running their good stuff on the out-of-bounds on the baseline. And really sharing the basketball. They've got a lot of weapons. They're quick in the transition, but when they don't get it, they really space the floor and find the open man. One of the things you can't get lulled to sleep by, they were just 10 and 22 a season ago, but they're just one of five Division I teams to return 90% of their points, rebounds, and assist this year. So they bring back a lot of experience. Bradley, Seton Hall, USC, and Wichita State, the other four teams. So there's a Colgate team with some moxie, and they've got a lot of veteran players who have them down by just two with the basketball. Ten seconds to go here in the first half. This is O'Brien being guarded by Anderson. O'Brien spinning. Has it blocked inside. At the buzzer. I don't think it's going to count, and indeed it is waved off. 
as UConn has the lead at the break, 33 to 31. And UConn did a good job early with their defense, and then they kind of stalled offensively, which caused them to really not get out and allow them to play pressure defense and extend. But Colgate's feeling very comfortable and confident going into the locker room. Opening that of this college basketball season, Terry Larrier has been the story for Connecticut. He's got a dozen points. He leads the way for Kevin Ollie's team. Following a break, Michelle Yu and Vin Parisi back in our New York studios. My
things happen when they do go through, through him, whether it's at the high post or on the perimeter or baseline. Colgate out with the same starting lineup they had to get it going here at Campo Pavilion. We're just underway, second half. Colgate down by just two. They trail by 13 at one point in the first half. This is O'Brien giving it up for bat. Nice up fake. Can he finish? No, he can't as Altery Gilbert skies to tie up the big man. It's a jump ball. That was a good move by Raymond to get to the rim. And Excuse me, that's back getting to the rim, all the way to the rim, but then even a better play by Gilbert as the resistor at the rim. Well, Altery Gilbert playing with a brace on his left shoulder. He suffered another separated shoulder, third game of the season at Los Angeles last year against Loyola Marymount right before halftime. It was not the first time he suffered that injury, so he's got the brace on there. Again, it's not a shooting shoulder, but it certainly is something that he hopes Keeps that shoulder in place as Larrier gets bumped on the way to the bucket. He's going to shoot two. But you knew coming in that last year that he'd be an explosive guard. And you pair him with Jalen Adams. Clearly, early in the season, they were trying to find their way. But when he went down out of the game that you and I were at out in Los Angeles, you knew it was pretty serious. And you know, that's a rough injury. And it's got to be in the back of his mind a little bit just to kind of get back into the flow. But so far, so good. He looks very comfortable out there on the floor. and. Uh, Obviously trying to just get through tonight and then get his backcourt mate Adams back with him on the floor. Terry Larrier, a 62% free throw shooter in the three and a half games he played a season ago. He's four for four from the line so far tonight. He's got 14 points for Kevin Ollie's squad. Holly Larrier. Anderson. Gilbert. And Cobb on the floor for Connecticut. Swapshire took an extra step. I take it back, stepped on the sideline. Well, that's, that's, that's the second time tonight Col a Colgate player has stepped on the sideline. And you know, as a coach, that drives you crazy. You got to know where you are on the floor. But a little bit ha that has to do with the pressure of Connecticut, not only on the basketball, but in the passing lanes. Colgate coming out second half, man to man. Anderson gets hit on the way up by O'Brien. He's going to shoot two. So Antoine Anderson, interesting guy. He's the grad transfer from Fordham. And not a guy afraid to take a big shot in a big situation. He hit three buzzer beating game winners during his time at Fordham hit one against VCU, hit another against St. Joe's a season ago. Well, he gives them more of a true point guard look at the top. And I like that he runs the team, he can knock down shots, but defensively he can really present a lot of problems. Look at that length, he's quick on the perimeter and really tough. UConn has made 11 of their 12 free throws. O'Brien, nice bounce pass. Bat giving it back for Swapshire. Too hard. Larrier chases it down and knocks it off the head of O'Brien. A heads up play by Terry Larrier, and the ball goes back to Connecticut. Well, Gary, this is the way UConn started the basketball game. They got out of the passing lanes, were very aggressive and disruptive defensively. And that time, Sean O'Brien said, wait a minute, Terry Larrier's foot was on the baseline, and I'm not sure he was I, wrong. I think he had a case right there. It did look like his foot was standing a little bit out of bounds, but nonetheless, the ball goes back to Connecticut with just over 18 minutes to go here in the second half. College basketball season underway all across the nation tonight. Shot clock now at five. Larrier is going to hoist one up there. Colgate's problem has not been on the defensive end of the floor. They've been solid all night, not long. It's just when they stop moving the basketball, and going one side and taking quick shots. Jordan Burns pushing off. That's an offensive foul as Gilbert 
Draws it. Good defense by Gilbert. Sell it, Gary. Sell it. This is what Gilbert does here. Just a little shove to the <laughs> chest, and it's like a truck hit him. You got to sell it. That's good defense. Well, there's going to be an emphasis this year when offense causes contact. Officials are going to look for that a little bit more often, especially if the defender has good position, which Gilbert did right there. I like that play by Gilbert. It shows a lot of toughness and intelligence on defense. That's Tyler Polly. Tyler Polly buries the three. That's his first three of the night. He's got seven points. Well, you want the offense, if you're Connecticut, to be confident, but it also allows this. It allows you to get into your pressure. Good extra pass. That's O'Brien scoreless on the night. He remains scoreless. Halfway down it. Bounces out. So the crowd getting into it for the first time tonight here at Gamble. Anderson quick along the baseline, spotting Gilbert. Putting it on the deck, circus shot, won't go. I thought he should have taken the three. It was wide open. Sometimes that happens. You've got to read the defense, and he was, was open on the perimeter. Speaking about wide open, that's Burns, but he can't get it to go down. And Anderson brings it across for Connecticut. Good job by Anderson, and that's why Kevin likes him at the point. Just a good decision not to push the tempo. Gilbert spotting Anderson. Good rebound by Eric Cobb, the big man. Draws the foul. Cobb's got seven rebounds, and he really is a big body. Well, he is a big body, but we'll go back to that new emphasis of the offense initiating contact. And I'm not so sure Cobb didn't just lower his shoulder and knock over Bat here. Just, oh, that's a foul on Bat. I'm not sure, but he might not have had position. Well, that's the thing. He did not. I don't think his body was squared up in there, which is why I think Cobb got the call. And the big man thinking about taking the three-pointer instead, puts it on the deck, working hard. Baby jump hook can't get it to go. Had good position, but cannot cannot finish, and then he's called for the foul. We talked about all of the use of Connecticut. Tyler Polly is one of those guys that knows how to play the game. You see him spacing out on the weak side, and this is what Connecticut has to do. Change sides of the floor, find the open man, and then, of course, knock it in and celebrate a little bit. Don't miss a minute of the action this season with a UConn basketball three or five game flex pack. Pick the games you want that best fit your schedule and your budget. Purchase your flex pack today at UConnTickets.com. Let's welcome back in Taylor Brooks. She's got more on Eric Cobb. That's right, Gary. You guys were mentioning him, and Coach Otley actually says he is the little Draymond Green of the team. Said he has a great way about himself, and he really has a point guard mentality. He can push. He's real big bodied, but he said throughout the season he really wants fans to see his passing ability, which really gives him another dimension, guys. Well, Taylor, if you're going to be compared to Draymond Green, Coach, I, I don't think that's too bad. Absolutely not. Eh? See, he wanted to tee up that three over on the sideline. He thought about it, didn't he? He said, I better wait a couple games before I start doing that <laughs> with the head coach right behind me. There's a foul on Altari Gilbert. That's his first personal. And the second on Connecticut here in the second half. UConn is on a 7-0 run here to open the lead to nine. Swapshire, quick first step. A little bit out of control, but he's bailed out. The blocking foul inside by Tyler Polly. That is going to send Swapshire to the free throw line. Well, Gary, you can tell Kevin Alley likes this basketball team. And when you have kind of a new taste, for the players and you know, after last year's disappointment and the you know, things went on with the injuries and then with you know, the transfers and you know, relying on veteran players who you didn't want to rely on and now this confusion of the youth it kind of, it kind of gives you a rebirth. 
You know, he gives you new energy, and I think you can see it with Kevin. He, he smiles. He really likes this group, and he knows it. It's going to be a work in progress. And you see parts of the game tonight where they make made major mistakes, but that's going to happen. But you can see the, the talent is there, and this team's going to get better and better. Well, Vance Jackson, he transferred to New Mexico. Juwan Durham transferred to Notre Dame. And they lost to even Enoch and transferred to Louisville. And Kevin told us this morning, I want guys who want to be here as the soft 10 foot turnaround goes down for Terry Larrier. He's got 16 points to lead the way. But Kevin really does want guys who want to be a part of this program. Well, there's no doubt about it. And Terry Larrier, you just saw what Kevin has done with him. He's really moved him around to a lot of different spots on the floor. I like that. And that time you saw like a mid post game from Terry Larrier. Shot clock at 10. There's Burns sliding into space. Can't get it to go. And Polly going way up to get that rebound. He's been compared to a young DeAndre Daniels, who won a national championship here at Connecticut back in 2014. Ooh, way up, and he went out of in his area as well. And it looks like Colgate back in there, two threes up. Gilbert from way downtown, O'Brien. Comes down with the rebound for Colgate. Well, all three Gilbert wants to shoot that three, but I don't think he's ready to make threes yet. He's got to get himself more into the flow of the game, off the bounce, getting to the rim. Slopshire thought about it. Ami, a beautiful feed for Bat, who dives to the bucket. He lays it in off the window, cutting the Connecticut lead back to seven. Well, again, that's when Colgate's been successful, spacing the court for round one and trying to attack after ball reversal and UConn not rotating properly. O'Brien from the left corner still can't get it to go as Cobb collides with Anderson and the big man brings it over midcourt. Cobb says, this is my board. <laughs> well, he thought about shooting the three and now he brings it up like a guard. So he obviously has some skills. Better have a little bit more presence though when Antoine Anderson is next to him. Don't knock him on his <laughs> backside. Larrier with the shot clock at five, the step back. O'Brien well, being guarded by Larrier. Holgate showing great patience. And poise not going away. In the lane, there's the little spinner from O'Brien, his first bucket of the game. He was 0 for 5 until that Little teardrop. Well, that was a better move by Sean O'Brien. He tried that move at the end of the first half, but he had a little bit more space off the bounce. He averaged just under 13 points a game a year ago, so he can score it for Colgate. Nice dump inside for Larrier. That's a beautiful move by Terry Larrier, but he comes up limping a little bit, and that's always of a concern. Well, again, though, Gary, can't say it enough. They have to go through him, keep looking at him, give him some looks, give him more touches on every possession. Swapshire from beyond the arc. Gilbert right down the lane. Beautiful body control, but cannot finish. And the foul on Larrier. So Colgate hanging around. Connecticut leads it 44 to 37. Terry Apple back alongside the coach, Tim Welsh, Taylor Rooks from Gamble Pavilion as we get a look at Terry Larrier on the bench. And I think that as they work on the right leg, it was the left knee that was injured a year ago. So that is, I think, a, uh, a little bit of an exhale. Well, anything is a concern for him after what they went through last year and what he went through. And you see how important he is to this team, especially with Jalen Adams out tonight. 18 points out of the 44, just making things happen. And Really, their only threat offensively to go get a basket on his own. All three, Gilbert has struggled a little bit to get into a rhythm, and Anderson's got to try to take over when he comes back in the game. And right now, UConn's got to be careful. 
at this point in the game with Larrier out. Well, there's Terry Larrier, and he's going to apparently go back to the locker room. Let's see, as uh, James Doran, the head athletic trainer for UConn basketball, is with him right there. He remains on the bench for the moment. We saw Antoine Anderson. He was getting worked on as well as he was a little gimpy coming up over midcourt. This is number five, Malcolm Regisford has checked into the game for Colgate. O'Brien being guarded by Gilbert. Shot clock at six now. O'Brien can't get the shot off. That is really good, solid defense by Altery Gilbert. Solid defense by Gilbert on the ball, never allowing O'Brien to get back to the other side of the floor. And UConn did a really good job of containing on that right side of the floor, rotating the defense over so Colgate could not get anything moving to the other side of the floor. But they need to get more movement. And that ball just stuck. And that allowed the defense to swallow the offense. 11 turnovers now in the game for Colgate is Will Raymond getting set to check back in. They need him to put up some offensive production if they're going to stay in this game. Gilbert. Not even close. Shot clock doesn't reset, but there's Isaiah Whaley. Another of the freshmen and a very active and a quick jumper. Uh, another freshman, Whaley and Polly, just goes and gets rebounds out of his area using length and that ability just to come in from the outside. Baxter just checking into the game, has it knocked away by Whaley. Here's Christian Vitale. All the way to the bucket, off the window, and he's got a chance at a three-point play. Strong move to the hoop by Christian Vitale. A couple key possessions with Larry out of the game and coming back in, but UConn doing a nice job defensively and turning defense into offense, and this is what Vitale can do. He's got that toughness, that ability just to put his chin down, his chest into the defender and finish in traffic. The foul is on the freshman. Hugh Baxter, young man out of Melbourne, Australia. That's the first bucket of the game now for Christian Patel. He had missed his first five shots. Good news is for Connecticut, Terry Larrier has checked back into the game. And so there's the conventional three-point play. And UConn had the lead by just two at the break, and they have extended it now to a dozen points. Ferguson, the freshman from Indiana, cannot finish. Larry or came over to help defensively. That's a bad decision by Ferguson, just taking the ball and going to the rim in traffic, not exploiting the defense. There's the freshman, Charlton, working, and Isaiah Whaley. There he is again. He's everywhere right now. Isaiah to the rescue, coming all the way from the three-point line to put the hurting on Colgate. UConn on a 7-0 run to open the lead to 51 to 37, and the big man making his presence felt. Well, it's hard enough to block guys out like Isaiah Whaley when they're around the basket, but when they come from the foul line area, forget about it. Number one, UConn women's basketball going to host number 17, Cal, in the season home opener next Friday, November 17th at 7 o'clock right here at Gambo Pavilion. Purchase your tickets today at UConnTickets.com. UConn women's basketball demand more as we see Alexis Gordon, the freshman, and I think she has many members of the UConn women's team around her. I think she was doing the sprinkler, Tim. I don't know Something if that's like that, your dance If you're moves. looking for the coach, he's not here because I drove in and I saw his car parked and I looked up and that little dim light was on in his office. So that meant Coach Oriema is breaking down today's practice up in the dark offices and that's why he's as successful as he is. That's why the, the Hall of Famer that he is. Burning the late oil to watch a little film. 9-0 run here for Connecticut as they've opened the lead to 14 points with 9 minutes and 45 seconds to go in the second half. This is Will Raymond looking to exert himself, and the defense is good, but he's hammered on his way up. He's going to shoot two. I think they've got Carlton, the big man, on the foul. Well, the length of Connecticut right now really bothering Colgate. And they're doing some switching on the defensive end. They're really showing themselves on the basketball. The ball screens are giving a lot of help. And then their rotations have been very, very good. And it's not easy for a young team to get all that. Offensively, sometimes offense comes a lot easier than defense. But this 
This Connecticut team is locked in right now on the defensive end of the floor. Raymond, a 69% free throw shooter a season ago, his freshman year at Colgate, but he was the Patriot League Rookie of the Year. One for two from the line so far tonight. A moment ago, a nice crowd here on opening nights. And Antoine Anderson with the basketball, but the foul is going to be called away from the ball on Isaiah Whaley. Well, we talked about the unknown of this basketball team in attending an American Media Day a few weeks ago down in Philadelphia, talking to some of the coaches in the conference. And I think that, that was really the feeling for this Connecticut team. Like, we don't know what they have. It could be, it could go either way, and you see tonight, there's a lot of talent out there. They just gotta come together, and you have to get Adams back as a leader, but I really like the young players up front. Raymond from way downtown, I think that was a force right there. They need to get him going, but that, not that kind of a shot. You know, some frustration setting in right now. Colgate can't get any rhythm going offensively. Then the bat chases down, the Carlton miss. Anderson trying to get all the way to the 10. That 16-footer rings out. Colgate is shooting just 18% so far in this second half. A big reason why Connecticut has opened the lead to 13. Their largest lead of the night has been 14. Shot and it's going to be Carlton going up over the back of Dana Batten. He's called for the foul. That is his third personal on the night. Really missed that shot, but Kevin Alley some really good minutes off the bench. And you can just see, you know, we talk about positionless basketball, and I think that's what Isaiah Whaley and Tyler Polly present for UConn. And you've seen that time tonight. They had Polly and Whaley. You know, they were up front, and who's the center? Not, neither, none of them are. They kind of just interchange out there defensively and kind of go with matchups, but on the offensive end of the floor, really space out, they can all step out. Sometimes they can go five out and really create some mismatches on the offensive end. Well, we know the game, as back goes to the free throw line right here, as UConn is over the limit. We know the game in the NBA has changed. We talk about that phrase, positionless basketball how much of it equates to the college game oh absolutely but you have to have the players that can do it and you have to have you know, power, uh, bigger players that are skilled and you know, if you have a guy out on the perimeter that can't handle the ball or can't pass or shoot then you're not going to be able to do anything because people aren't going to defend him out there on the floor you've got you have to recruit to that type of basketball and that's where connecticut's done a nice job with these young players christian vital off the cross court pass chases down his own miss Keeps it alive, but it's into the hands now of Sean O'Brien. Raymond dumping it down for Bat, up fake. And there's Mamadou Diara coming from the weak side to get the block, but the call is going to be made on Antoine Anderson. That's his second foul of the night. So Connecticut has the lead 51 to 40 with under eight to go. Seven consecutive series against Colgate, looking to make it eight straight tonight. Last time they met back in 2009, UConn 77 63 winners right here at Gamble Pavilion. Gamble has been a very friendly place for opening night for Connecticut. They had won 27 consecutive before last season when they lost shockingly to Wagner. They're looking to change that script tonight, and well on their way. They lead it by 11 with under eight minutes to go as Bat misses the first of two. Well, the thing I've been impressed about Connecticut tonight, Gary, is even when Colgate's made their little mini runs to get back in the game, there's been no panic. 
and they seem to play well together. They, they're taking the coaching of Kevin Ollie very, very well. And Kevin seems very positive with his guys, letting them play through their mistakes. Well, a step back by Terry Larrier. That's a new career high for Terry Larrier here at Connecticut. He's got 20 points. Strong move to the bucket by the freshman Jordan Burns, kissing in off the glass. Well, whatever happens tonight, Matt Lang has got to be happy with some of his young players at Colgate. People in the Patriot League think that Colgate can contend at the top of the league. They are a little bit out of control. O'Brien missing off the runner. Stays right with it, but it's Vital who comes out with it. Connecticut's got numbers, but boy, there's Ferguson. Never gave up on the play. Four on one, Ferguson inside to Raymond, who's hammered by Vital, and he's going to shoot two. Coming up on Tuesday, UConn and Stony Brook going to get together in Hartford at the XL Center. UConn versus Stony Brook. Coverage beginning with our pregame broadcast at 6.30, only right here on SNY. Will Raymond leads Colgate. He's got 15 points. Two of three at the free throw line. And Make it three out of four as it crawls in over the front iron. Patel and Diara go to take a seat. Gilbert and Whaley check in for Kevin Ollie's squad. Sean O'Brien is a nice job here in the last few minutes of getting into his teammates' grill a little bit, just kind of telling them, we're not out of this game yet. Just keep grinding. And that they're doing, they're hanging around. It hasn't been pretty, but still within reach. It is just a nine-point game with six and a half to go. And with a lot of young players on the floor for Connecticut, you never know how they're going to respond in pressure situations. Whaley could not find a seam. There's Polly, that high arcing jump shot won't go. Larry, you're working inside. That knocks it away, but there's Whaley. And again, Isaiah Whaley, very active on the offensive glass. Presence of mind, and then Larry are clearly doing his work in the lane. Whaley's got eight points and three rebounds. He was the best recruit for Kevin Ali, and Kevin really likes him. There's Ferguson. Good rotation, but too long. Polly cutting to the bucket. A little bit out of control, but he's bailed out. Go to shoot two. This is what we talked about, being able to go get rebounds out of your area and the length of Larrier showing in the lane there. But Whaley with the presence of mind again with the second effort. So as I mentioned a moment ago, he was the last recruit for Kevin Ali in this class. And, you know, there's so much discussion about recruiting and, you know, five-star prospects or four-star prospects, but you can't always go by that. I mean, certain guys adapt to the game quicker than others have a feel for the game. I, I try not to get caught up. At, you're somebody who coached Providence for 10 years. How did you look at that? Well, there's no question. You have to find guys that will fit in your system and also get recruits that you know, want to buy into what you're going to do. And you, know, you spend so many hours watching tape, talking to kids, visiting with them. That it's a big world out there. There's a lot of good players that sometimes go under the radar. And I really like what UConn's done with this recruiting class. Jordan Burns spinning. It's caught in the air. Bat has it knocked away. And it went off. Bat it's going back over to Connecticut. Boy, Bat's made a lot of good plays to get all the way to the rim and just gets walled off to, with his finish. He's got to be frustrated, but this is what happens. I mean, Connecticut, again, doing a nice job with their rotations and their length, really bothering Colgate as they try to finish. But we've also seen, and we've seen it from Gilbert a couple times, we saw it from Anderson right there, cutting off the baseline. The quickness, the lateral quickness to shut down that lane to the bucket. Well, they're also, they have their hands up, and they're using their length. I mean, it's one thing to have length, and it's not, another thing to use it, and that's what Connecticut's done in the second half. Gilbert has his pocket picked by Jordan Burns. Eurostep off the window, can't get it to go. Swapshire follows. Good second effort there by Swapshire, but Burns made a good effort on the defensive end of the floor. 
picking the pocket. And Connecticut's got to settle down, run some good offense, and look for Larry. Jordan Swapshire now with nine points. So the lead is 11 for Connecticut as we come up on the four and a half minute mark. At Gamble Pavilion, Terry Larrier, 17-footer. That's not a good shot. That's a force. That's a not get involved, not being involved for a few minutes and just being a little frustrated. And Larrier limping back up the court is Sean O'Brien. Knocks down the three. Just his second made bucket of the night. I don't know if that's a cramp or what it is for Larrier, but it's certainly bothering him again. Played a lot of minutes tonight for his first night back, and he's had to do a lot without Jalen Adams on the floor and maybe taking his toll. He's played 30 minutes so far for Connecticut as we head down the stretch here at Gamble. You make sure to keep it right here after the final whistle for the People's United Bank postgame show. I'll be joined by Vin Parisi. Plenty of reaction from this one, including Kevin Ollie's postgame interview. So make sure to stick around after the game is over. For now, back to Gary and Tim. All right, Michelle, we look forward to your postgame broadcast. And anytime you're sitting alongside Vin Parisi, that's a quality postgame broadcast. Quality knowledge on top of that. High level knowledge. Both Terry Larrier and Antoine Anderson were worked on by the head trainer James Doran during that timeout, but both are back on the court for Connecticut. So as we come up on four minutes, it's still just an eight-point game. A lot of time left, and Colgate continues to hang around. Gilbert, Gilbert Polly, Larrier, Anderson, and Whaley on the court here for Connecticut. Shot clock at five. Gilbert knifing between defenders. Can't get it to go. And it's Raymond who comes down with it. Gilbert just two for 13 from the floor on the night. Really solid defense by Colgate on that position. Kind of playing almost a zone with man principles. Getting in the lane, giving a lot of help. O'Brien getting to the baseline. Swapshire wide open and Swapshire knocks down the three to cut the lead down to five. Swapshire in double figures. He's got a dozen. Well, Koke, great patience on that possession. Just waited, 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 drove into the gap, drew the defense, and found the open man on the perimeter. And Swapshire playing with confidence. It's an 8 0 run for Colgate to get back in this. As we are at three minutes to go now. Opening night here at Gamble Pavilion, Connecticut coming off a season a year ago where they were a game under 500, their first losing season since Jim Calhoun's first year here at Connecticut. A tough shot right there Anderson. by Antoine Anderson. That's a shot maker at its best, and Connecticut desperately needed that as Colgate denied Larry on the weak side. O'Brien down to a knee. And calls a timeout. And you know, Tim, we spoke a little while ago about Anderson, a guy who's hitting big shots, buzzer shots, when he was at Fordham, not afraid in big situations well, to have the ball in his hands. Exactly, and that's why you bring in a grad student transfer. You want to make sure that he's played at this level, he's, made, he's played in big games. And you see Anderson right there, he, he had the presence of mind to understand he had to make something happen as the shot clock was expiring. What about the step up from, and listen, mid-majors, talk about the Atlantic 10, they've made some very deep runs in the NCAA tournament, but this, when you go to, and this isn't a Power 5 conference, but it is a solid conference. Wichita State is now in the AAC. What about the step up to a place well, like Connecticut? Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's really all semantics. I mean, if you want to call the Atlantic 10, you know, what you call it, I would not call it a mid-major at all. I would call it one of the elite conferences in the country right below the Power 5, as I would at the American. So it's right on par in some, depending on what year you're in. And certainly you're playing against the VCUs, the Rhode Islands, the, the Dayton's of the world. Those teams are a high quality team. So Anderson's played against really good competition. He looks confident playing in this game tonight. Two and a half minutes to go. Connecticut has the lead by seven. Swapshire handing off to O'Brien. 
the freshman, Jordan Burns, giving it up inside Swapshire. That's a beautiful feed and a nice finish by Swapshire, who now has 14 points on 5 of 10 shooting. Well, most freshmen like Burns would just put their head down and try to make, some, make a play by for themselves, but he had a great understanding. He drew the defense and found Swapshire wide open. He's been really impressive. Five assists to go along with his 11 points, but there's Connecticut at the other way. Terry Larrier, now a new overall career high. He had 21 at VCU, and he's got 22 tonight. Well, that was a great understanding by, by Connecticut on the offensive end. Jordan Burns at six feet was got matched up on the mismatch there down in the box, and this is easy money for Larrier, but good recognition by Connecticut to find him against the six-foot Burns. Little Raymond stepping on the end line. It's going back over to Connecticut. I believe that's the third time tonight Colgate has stepped up either on the sideline or the end line. Well, experienced players don't do that, but they do do that when the defense rattles you. And right now, Connecticut stepping up the pressure. Time running out for Colgate. We're coming up on a minute and a half to go. Anderson got poked in the face. Larrier trying to go to work on Swapshire. There's Terry Larrier. Ice water in his veins. Terry Larrier now with 24 to lead the way for Connecticut. Uh, good things happen, as we've said all night long, when Larrier puts his mitts on the basketball, and he's done it in a lot of different ways. There's a turnover. Anderson. Giving it up to Larrier. Terry Larrier, big smile on his face, and rightly so. Connecticut now with 26 points off turnovers. And Larrier's got 27 on the night to lead everybody. O'Brien inside with a tough bucket. And a quick timeout by Matt Lingle. Well, you could do a clip package and mark the spots on the floor, and this man's name would be on almost every spot in every way possible. He's done it out of the mid post, he's done it out of the low post, he's done it on the base, baseline, the high post from the three-point line, and that is a smooth player. Love the bench reaction. Eric Cobb right there. It's first game in a Connecticut uniform. But isn't that like exactly what we've spoken about with Terry Larrier? Positionless, can score from anywhere. There's no real true position for a player like that. Well, that, exactly, Gary. And this is what, you know, when you look at it as a basketball person and try to evaluate Connecticut's season last year, I can't tell you. People say, well, what's wrong with Connecticut? I say, well, what's wrong with Connecticut? They lost two out of their best three players for the season. And not many programs can withstand that. I mean, the Kentuckys and the Dukes have 10 high school American, Americans, but Connecticut can't withstand that, and that's what happened a year ago. You see how good Larrier is, and he's going to be this year. Terry Larrier getting it done from everywhere on the floor. Very confident, no hesitation. Coming down, trailing the break, knocks it down. The little fadeaway, these are elite moves we're seeing. They're elite moves, but it's also a better understanding as the games progress that he is the man. It's not an equal opportunity offense for Connecticut. You know, once Jalen Adams gets back in the lineup, he'll, he'll, he'll control the basketball, but he has that presence of mind to understand. We've got to get the ball to Terry Larrier. It's got to go through him, which will make everyone else better because if he continues to do that, people are going to really pay a lot more attention to him, which will open up other avenues for their younger players. Way to return to the court for Terry Larrier. 11 of 18 shooting on the night for his team high and game high 27 points as we're under a minute to go. 45. Just over 45 seconds as Christian Vitale is going to go to the free throw line. And you know, on our, on our open tonight, we spoke about both Larrier and Gilbert and how they were going to respond having missed most of last season. And Larrier has had a terrific game. Gilbert has struggled just a little bit. He's got a couple points and just two of 13 shooting. Well, Gilbert will get there. There's no doubt about that. And, and playing with Adams will help. And once you know, they can play three guards with Larry out there. I mean, Kevin Alley has a lot of options. And I think that's what he likes. He's not going to get locked into positions out there on the floor. Who's my five? Who's my four? As he has in the past. He's going to have to be able to put a lot of skill on the basketball floor. And guys that can defend. I mean, they don't have a lot of girth out there on the floor. Cobb gives them that. But he also has skill on the offensive end of the floor. So they have a lot of interchangeable positions on both ends. 
You count a 16 of 17 from the free throw line as there goes Will Raymond, who's been relatively quiet here in the second half as O'Brien reaches in and fouls Antoine Anderson. We get a look right now, the drive of the game. It is presented by Nissan. This was the first bucket of the game for Terry Larrier, the great body control, kissing it in off the glass. It was certainly the start of what has been a big night for Terry Larrier. He's going to be hard to stop, Gary, just because of the fact that he has a good presence of mind out there on the floor to move around. He, he's not a standstill offensive player, meaning that he moves without the ball. He kind of finds his little gaps on the baseline from the high post, low post, and also on the perimeter. Raymond has it rejected by Whaley. And it's Gilbert who comes out with it. Anderson hammered by Raymond. Crowd doesn't like it, but Anderson is going to go back to the free throw line. He's played 35 minutes tonight for Connecticut. He's been on the floor more than anybody for UConn. Well, he gives him that true point guard look from the top, and, you know, he he can push the pace. We saw him make shots earlier in the game, and he's going to have to step up and make shots. And seem to see how Kevin plays it as they move forward. He's kind of in a three-guard look with Anderson, Gilbert, and Adams. And not only offensively, but defensively, they're going to be able to really be able to get after people. That's a lane violation, so the ball went back over to Colgate, but now the clock at 10 seconds, and Connecticut is going to pick up an opening night victory here over Colgate. Christian Batal bounces out the clock, and that is it. Kevin Ollie and company open up in style as they get the win here over Colgate. 70 to 58, and that's eight consecutive wins for the Huskies over the Raiders. Very impressive defensively in the second half. Colgate, Colgate got a lot of confidence at the end of the first half that they were hanging around, and maybe he could come back and win this basketball game, but that man right there made sure that was not the case. Terry Larry just took over down the stretch. You know, we saw a big smile on the face of Jalen Adams a moment ago. He's got to be breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief, knowing that his absence didn't end up costing Connecticut tonight. We got to check the player of the game. It is presented by People's United Bank. I don't think there's any question about it. It is Terry Larrier of Connecticut. And you saw the excitement from his teammates on the sideline, not only from his play, but when somebody goes through what he went through last year, the whole of the rehab and missing the whole season, when you come back in the first game and have this type of game, makes everybody right, pretty coach, happy. You just said good job, Terry. He, you said you need him to be a multi-dimensional player. Yeah. He was that. In what ways did he change the game for your he team? He was just efficient. He took his time. When they went zone, he got it in the four hole for us. When they went man, they was real small. He took his time in the post, so very efficient player tonight. And then he gave us some juice on the defensive end, and that's what we're talking about, that 3-D player. You said that you want your team to play together. How would yeah. you evaluate their connectedness tonight? Yeah, they play together. You know, we had some lows there, but this is a real good Patriot League team, and they're going to win a lot of games. O'Brien is good. Raymond is good. They got in our paint. They was making threes. Um, but we did a good job staying together, and our second half was unbelievable. So much of the talk coming into this game was about the slow start last season, the struggles last season. Did this really show that is in the past? It's now it's now time to look ahead. Yeah, we're not looking in the past. We uh, learn from the past, but we're not living in the past. And we're just going to play together. And every day and every moment, we're going to take it all in. And we're going to, you know, just get everything we can get out of it. And we're going to keep fighting. And we're not going to cheat the grind each and every day. And this was a good start for us because that's a really good team, a veteran-laden team. And we got pretty much 11 new players. Congrats on the okay, win, Coach. Thank you. Back to you, Gary. All right, Taylor, we thank you. Coach, as well as Connecticut, gets the win 70-58. to 58. And so Kevin Ollie's sixth season here at UConn begins in style. Terry Larrier, the story for Connecticut. We'll come back in a moment. SNY is brought to you by Bob's Discount Furniture, proud to be the official furniture store of the Yukon Huskies. By Nissan, get Black Friday savings now at Nissan's Master the Drive Sales event. Shop, choose Nissan.com. By Town Fair Tire, every brand at the guaranteed lowest price. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire, nobody. And by GMC, visit your local Connecticut GMC dealers.
Opening night here at Gamble Pavilion, the UConn Huskies knock off the Raiders of Colgate 70 to 58. They get their season started in style. The next UConn men's game here on SNY going to be Tuesday night from the XL Center in downtown Hartford, Connecticut. The Huskies go to take on Stony Brook. Our coverage begins with the Connecticut Lottery pregame show beginning at 6.30. And so for Tim Welsh, Taylor Brooks, producer Gerard Guilfoyle, director John DeMarsico, and our entire SNY crew, I'm Gary Apple. We sit into our studios in New York right now and join Michelle Yu and Vin Parisi for the People's United Bank post-game show.